Stare at the rotating cube. What do you notice? Is there anything ambiguous about the way the cube is moving? Can you tell what direction it's turning? Are you sure? Hi, and welcome to the Exploratorium. My name's Lori Lambertson, and I'm one of the science educators here in the museum's Teacher Institute. These exhibits are the foundation of our work and provide opportunities for exploring phenomena and figuring things out for yourself. Exploratorium staff have created hundreds of at-home and classroom versions of our exhibits, which we call science snacks. They're literally bite-sized versions of our exhibits. Using our science snacks, you can build your own exploratorium at home. This snack, Ambiguous Cube, asks for plastic straws and chenille stems. These might not be the kinds of things you have at home, but don't overlook this snack. I've been building cubes out of skewers and tape and toothpicks but what I'm really excited about is finding box shapes that already exist. First, I started with a cardboard box, but then I realized that wasn't going to work. I need to use a box shape I can see through. The finished snack you can clearly see through. What other box shapes can I see through? How about clear food containers from the kitchen? Or a strawberry basket? or even a strawberry basket that I cut away all of the sides from. All of these work for this snack. What's important is that you need to be able to see all of the edges. How many edges does a box shape have? Can you count them and find out? These shapes have mathematical names. If all the sides are the same length, we call it a cube. If the sides are of unequal lengths, we call it a rectangular prism. What rectangular prisms can you find that you can make work with this snack? I found all of these containers worked just great. Let's see how to do the snack together. First, you need to clear off the space where you're going to put down your cube or rectangular prism. You don't want any visual distractions. The floor works great. I'm going to use this table and move all these other things out of my way. And I'm even going to use one of my pre-existing box shapes because I know a lot of you don't have the plastic straws and chenille stems at home. I'm going to stand a few feet away and I'm going to cover or close one of my eyes. Make sure your hands are clean before you put your hand over your eye. I'm looking at the corner that is furthest from me and touching the table. What do I notice? A container on the table. But now I'm going to change my mindset. I need to convince myself and you need to convince yourselves that the corner that is furthest from you is actually the corner that is closest to you. This takes a little concentration and now, once I've convinced myself that that far corner is actually closest to me, I'm going to rock back and forth from one foot to the other. What do you notice? It looks like the shape is balancing on one corner and dancing along with me. When I move to the right, it moves to the right. When I move to the left, it moves to the left. Can you maintain your believing so that you can walk all the way around the shape and have this dance all the way around with you? Try it. How easy was it for you to convince yourself that what you saw was not what was in front of you? Many of our exhibits rely on believing what you see and seeing what you believe. Ambiguous means open to having more than one interpretation. How valuable is that in our lives? How many different shapes can you get to dance around the room with you? Do those shapes have to be cubes or rectangular prisms? Have fun exploring and keeping your mind open to multiple interpretations as you build your own exploratorium at home. <laughs>